Welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming, everybody. I'm your host, Blaine, and today we're going to be continuing with part three of our Kenshi Beginner's Guide. If you're watching part three, I'm going to assume you've already watched part one and two, and therefore I'm not going to cover that exact same information. I may touch base on some of the same topics, but in general, this is going to be all new information. So the very first thing you should do when you enter the game world is familiarize yourself with the controls. Now you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out, you can use the middle mouse button to turn the camera, or you can use Q and E to turn the camera. You can use WASD to move the camera around, or the arrow keys. I should probably also mention at this point that you actually have to right click to move your character around. Your selected character is down here. If you have more than one character, they'll be listed down here. You can select however many of them you want and you move them around with a right click. You can also do this on the map to have them move great distances. Now I've already talked about some of the shortcut keys in the other videos, but an important one to know is I opens up your inventory and you'll be using that a lot. The other thing I wanna mention is that if you have a backpack, it will automatically open it once you have clicked open bag at least one time with most of your characters. You can always hit this button again, the open bag, to close your backpack if you need to. Once you understand the basic camera controls, you want to move on to being able to interact with objects. Now the first thing that you need to know is that if you left click on anything, it will highlight the item down in the bottom left corner over here, and it will tell you everything about that item that your characters can actually know. So just here, we clicked on the Market Stall C, and it says it has ran by the Holy Nation Outlaws. It tells you the town you're in, which is the hub, and it's open to the public, so public. If you click on, say, a ruined building, it will tell you similar information down here, except for that it's also for sale. So if you have 4,800 cats, which is the money in this game, the currency, you can purchase it. One of the first things that I think you should do before you even start moving your character around is pause the game and take a look around at your surroundings. If you are in a town when you start off, click on many different objects and see what types of things they are. Anything from the market stalls to the broken water generators here to the lights to the different buildings. They all tell you different information in the bottom left corner here. And while none of it is super duper important, it's really good to know generally what things are in the game. You may overlook something because you think it's something different. One of the big things that this happens to is buildings. Oftentimes you can tell what a building is from way outside the city. If you spawned and say you're up on this hill up here, you could click on the buildings from all the way back here and have a general idea of what's going on in the town. This building here, if you clicked on it, it's the bar. What about that big tower? over there. You click on the tower, you see that it's ran by the shinobi thieves down here. So you know whether or not to avoid them. When you start the game and when you explore the world, always be looking around. Take the time to pause the game and just take in your surroundings. There's a lot of things that you can see in the game world that you might very easily miss. One example of that is these things right here. Right outside town, if you just kind of look, it looks like a bunch of trees and some rocks. This is not actually a rock. It's actually a mine. If you look at it and click on it, it actually shows you in the bottom left corner what it is. This is an iron resource. And this is something that's very easy to miss if you don't know about it. It just looks kind of like a rock. When you first start the game, I highly recommend you click on just about everything you possibly can just to see what it does. Another really cool feature about looking around is if you hold the Alt key, it actually highlights everything that's on the ground. This means anything that's on tables or anything that's loose that you can pick up. You can pick it up freely. And when you scroll over, if it goes green, that means you can pick it up without any precautions whatsoever and it's just going to fill up your inventory and that's about it. It's effectively yours at that point. But if you go inside say a store, everything in here highlights red. That means it is an owned item and you have to steal it if you want it. And in Kenshi there's several different things about that particular art that you need to know before you start wandering around stealing everything. It's not like many other games like Skyrim and stuff where you can just put a bucket over the shopkeeper's head and steal everything. It requires a little bit of we'll say practice. The nice thing about Kenshi is that you can't accidentally pick up an item. So if you right click on something, it will tell you right here, hold down the alt key to steal items. You have to be holding alt to actually steal anything. Once you've wandered around a little bit, you may be interested in picking some items up that you see, especially if you start off in the hub where there's actually a bunch of little items that you can take. Now, in all honesty, these items are worth very little money and they're honestly really not worth picking up. You can if you want to, you can just pick them up and sell them if you want. But for you guys, it's actually more important just to kind of learn how the game works. If you hold alt and left click on an item, you'll pick it up. If you're holding alt, you have to left click, but if you're not holding alt, you right click. You'll see that we have picked up an empty rum bottle worth three C's, which is three cats, and then the cup, which is worth six cats. 
Now that we've discussed interacting with objects a little bit, let's talk about interacting with NPCs. There's two basic interactions that you have with NPCs, either combat or conversation. Most NPCs, if you scroll over them, the cursor doesn't change. If you see here, nothing happens. Your cursor stays exactly the same. The only way to interact with that person would be to hold right click and select one of the following options, either to follow them, bodyguard them, which means to protect them if they get attacked or attack them. Now you can do that with any NPC that you see. There is one other type of interaction, however, if you move your cursor over an NPC and the cursor changes to a chat bubble, that means you can talk to this person. Every NPC is a little bit different, but there are a few basic types of conversations. You have conversations that just give you a little bit of explanation about who they are and what the world is around them. And then there's shopkeepers and other people that have special dialogue options. You can find these type of characters just about anywhere, but the bars are the most common place to find people that have special options. Such as over here, this is a mercenary captain. Mercenary captains can actually be hired along with their crew to help protect you and your people. They're very expensive and they keep all the loot of anybody they defeat. If you take that loot, it's considered stealing, but it can be worth it in the early game if you need to protect a base or something like that, or if you're just really struggling for any type of combat. The other type of person in a bar you can talk to is someone like this. They're a drifter. You can see that their stats are extremely low, which is actually a pretty good indicator that you could probably hire that person. So if you right click that person, you will now see a small little dialogue system where you can click one, two, three on your keyboard or click it with your mouse. And generally it's a small little dialogue followed by, will you hire me for a certain amount of money? Or sometimes they'll join you for free. This person wants 6,000 cats to hire them. You can't afford it, so sorry. This type of interaction is very common in bars throughout Kenshi. You can generally hire people to join your party by talking to them and paying a small fee. The final type of interaction here is talking with this person over here behind the bar, the shopkeeper. If you click on them, you see down here that they are a shopkeeper underneath their goal. That means you can buy and sell goods from them. Simply right click them and ask them to do business. Now, the one thing I will say is whenever you do this, hit spacebar, pause the game. It does not matter how you interact with this person. Whenever you talk to someone and open up a shop, it automatically unpauses the game, even if you've paused it when you're right next to them. So make sure you repause the game if you planned on having the game paused while you're interacting with them. Buying and selling is simply just right-clicking an object and bringing it into your inventory. Something as simple as right-clicking food here will bring it on over into your inventory. If you shift right-click a stack of items, it'll bring all of it over in your inventory, like so. The final thing I actually have to say about this particular scenario that we have is that our character is hungry. If you have food in your inventory, your character will automatically eat it when they get hungry enough. There's no specific measure of when they get hungry enough. Your character will just automatically do it for you. If you also have a backpack and have food in your backpack, your character will share all that food with your current party members in the same squad. If you have multiple squads, they will only share it with their particular squad, which I'll explain in a later video. If you watch here, I will unpause the game and they ate the Gohan. So now their food is completely, well, it will completely fill up and our food has been eaten as much as they can to fill up their hunger meter. Now that we've looked at interacting with the world around us and talking to NPCs, let's talk about making money. In the very early game, the easiest way to collect money is just simply mining. All you have to do to mine is take your character and right click on the iron ore. Your character will automatically begin mining, this bar will fill up, and then it will generate iron as you're sitting here as time goes by. The only thing you really need to know about mining is that one, this little uh, resource right here can only hold up to five ore. So you have to clear it out periodically to make sure that you can keep mining. The other thing is down here is the number of workers that a particular resource can handle. This particular one can handle up to three people. We currently have one out of three people working it. The more people you have working it, the faster this bar will go up. Your laboring skill will affect how quickly you can mine, but honestly, in the early game, it doesn't really matter. As just the more characters you have, the faster it'll go. That's just kind of how it'll go your entire game. Once you've collected some ore, simply bring it over in your inventory. I shift right click so that way it just drags everything in your inventory quickly for you, or you can drag them one by one or right click them one by one to bring them over slowly. Once they're in your inventory, all you have to do is go back and sell it to a shopkeeper. A really quick side note about mining. While iron ore is the most common resource to find in the world, there are also copper nodes throughout the world. Right next to hub, there's this one down here. And then up here on the far side of this mountain, there's one way over here. You can't really see it, but it's way over there. The reason why I bring this up is because copper sells for anywhere from double to triple the amount that iron does. So if you're looking to just try and make pure money and not worry about strength training, go with copper over iron every single time. The next thing I want to talk about is combat. 
Now I'm not going to cover this too in depth because honestly there's a lot of advanced stuff you need to know about the combat in the game for your characters to be really really efficient. But in the beginning when you're just starting out the only thing you really need to know is that to do combat you select your character and right click on the enemy you want to attack. Your characters will fight until one of you goes unconscious. As I mentioned in a previous video every race has a different maximum hit points. Every character's hit points can go to negatives below zero to a number that is determined by their toughness score. As you get beat up your toughness score will rise and you can go further into the negative before your character's limbs either break or you go unconscious. The most important things to know about combat in Kenshi is that the game is designed expecting you to go down and get knocked out many 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 times throughout your gameplay. So don't fret if your character gets knocked out. The best thing I can advise is that you use multiple characters in your games so that way you can leave one character in a safe location and come to the rescue of the other characters with first aid kit or just simply being able to pick them up and carry them back to rest in a bed because the primary ways of healing limb damage and body damage is by using either a first aid kit or robotic repair kit if you're a skeleton and then resting in a bed. If you're on your own the game can be incredibly difficult because if you get knocked out there's a good chance you might just simply bleed out and die. I've mentioned several times that I prefer to play the game with multiple people in my party and let me show you guys why. To begin with, you can always have a second person working on something like mining, collecting money while the other person is out adventuring and doing whatever else you want. And they can actually rescue one another if something bad happens. I'm first going to show you guys how to trade between one another. So if you have two people here, you have Noobie McNoob Face and Noob2 here. Both of them have their own separate inventory. If you push 1 and 2 on the keyboard, you'll switch between them. And as you can see, Noob2 already has some med kits and Noobie McNoobface has a single one. I'm going to give this basic first aid kit to Noob2. The simplest way to do it is simply take the object and drag it down to their portrait down here. As long as they are within a certain proximity, there's no exact proximity number, but relatively close, you'll automatically drop the item into their inventory. The other way to do it is if you select one of your characters, right click and hold the other character and open up the trade menu, you'll open up both characters portraits here and you can trade freely between the two so long as they're close enough. Another tip is if you want to trade between two people, you don't necessarily have to do the right click method. What you can do is you can actually click this little circle icon right here on your inventory and it'll keep that menu open when you select a different character and open up their inventory as well. You can do this with any number of characters. Their sheets will just simply overlap. The next thing I want to show you is how to actually use a first aid kit. This actually presents us with an opportunity to show you guys some other camera controls as well. If you double click the number key corresponding with the character or double click a portrait, you'll actually snap to and lock your camera to that character so you can zoom in and out and it will stay on them. We currently have Noob2 selected. We're going to have him run over to Noobie and we're going to hold and right click and click first aid. Now you can just right click. As you see the cursor turns into a green plus icon. That's the medic icon. That means your character will run over here and try and heal him. There's two things that you can actually do to prevent having to do this exact function. One, you can give your character the medic job. You can either click the button and your character will automatically begin medicking, or if you shift left click it, it will add it to the jobs themselves. So he'll begin healing him. That's all you have to do to use a first aid kit. As you heal a companion, you will use the med kits up. If you watch here closely, it will begin to drop rapidly. The reason why it drops so rapidly is because we're not very proficient in the medic skill. If you come right here, each character has a field medic skill. The higher this skill is, the slower these med kits will be used up when you're healing somebody. Newbie here is now unconscious and he's going to be for a little while. You see that his stats here are now fully recovered in bright yellow. That means they will heal eventually over time and given 110 seconds he will likely wake up. In this particular case he will not fully wake up because his toughness is actually only 3 which means he will be knocked out until his stomach heals up to negative 12 at which point he will wake up. So he's going to go into a recovery coma as soon as he hits 0 with the unconscious timer. And then as you watch his stomach will slowly heal because it's been bandaged and as it heals up to negative 12 he will be able to get up. But what happens if you're in a dangerous area where you don't want to be stuck out here? Well this is where you can have a character pick somebody up. You can do this with any unconscious person whether they're friendly or not. You can either have them pick up a character by right clicking when your cursor changes to the pickup icon or you can hold right click and select pickup. Now Noob2 can run freely and bring 
newbie back to a bed. And that's generally what you want to do. If your character is unconscious, you generally want to try and get them to a bed because their wounds will heal much, much faster. When a character has been bandaged, their stats will turn bright yellow, as you can see down here. Now that is not actually healed. That is just where your character will naturally heal up to. However, if that limb gets hit one time, that entire yellow bar will disappear and the damage will come directly off the darker color here, which means while his head is fully bandaged up, if he gets hit one time, this 27 will take the damage, not this entire gold bar here. So he's still very vulnerable to being hurt very easily. By putting them in a bed, what it does is it actually heals the lower, the darker color here quicker. So this character will heal fully very quickly. So to heal your character, all you have to do is put a character in a bed. By selecting Noob2 who's carrying Newbie, you can right click on a bed, click put into bed and you'll pay the fee. They will set the character in there and your character will begin to heal. If you watch the stats now, they will heal quite rapidly. The two notes to this is one, the best thing to do is actually to buy a camp roll from one of the vendors because you can place that just about anywhere in the world and have a portable bed anywhere. The only downside is that you heal quite slowly in that, but at least you will heal. The other option is to save up and buy a house and build a bed inside your own home. While Newbie is recovering, let's take a look at building. Now, there are many reasons why you don't actually really want to build in the early game. The biggest reason is as soon as you build a building, bandits will begin to attack your place. And honestly, it can derail a fun campaign very quickly if your base is constantly getting attacked. However, building can be done in town as well. If you purchase a building, you can always add stuff to your building. So I'm going to show you guys how the building function works and I'll let you guys play with how it actually works in the game world for your game. In a later video, I will discuss some advanced tips to building and when is a good place to build and where is a good place to build. There's a couple rules that you have to know. If you click the build icon right here, the game will pause and you'll be given this menu here. In the bottom right corner is all the different hotkeys to actually moving the buildings and changing the rotations and everything like that. The important thing for you guys is on the left hand side of the screen here, this is all the different categories that you have. Buildings, camping, farming, lights, mining, storage, tech, and so on you'll get a couple new things as you do research which is a whole nother ball game so i'll explain that later as well in the beginning you're not going to have too many options to choose from if you decide to build outside of city walls there's a couple of rules you have to follow by clicking on the actual building within the category you can see that we're going to try and build a small shack now if you see the color blue that means you are too close to another town to build you can't build in another city's territory. If it's blue, that means you're within their territory. When it goes green, that means you are outside of the territory. So right here. So while Squin is right there, we could technically build a shack right here and be that close to another town if we wanted to. If you do that, you will be visited by people from the nearest town, such as Squin here. And generally, they'll require taxes or something like that because you're effectively building in their territory. The only way to get around that is by building really far away from civilization, which in Kenshi not necessarily the best option. It's usually better just to pay small taxes and move on. If the icon turns red, such as this, that means you can't build it because there's an object blocking it. There are a couple mods that I highly recommend. There's the slopeless mod, which allows you to build just about anywhere. As you see, we can't build on this cliffside here because the angle of the ground is too steep. If you get the slopeless mod, you can actually build up here if you so chose. There's some reasons why you'd want to do that, and there's certain build locations where it really sucks, like right here. If you wanted to build right here, while your character could easily enter that building and live there, the game doesn't allow you. With the slopeless mod, you could build right there. An important thing to note when you're actually building a structure is the rotation and keeping an eye on where doors are. Your characters must be able to get up the ramp into their doors for them to use it. It's very easy to actually build a structure that your characters can't get into and it's very frustrating when it does happen. Now the way the building menu works is you can actually set up multiple buildings to be built and you can choose when you want to build them. For example, we have this small shack here. If we wanted to build a small shack here, all you have to do is click, left click, and it'll drop down the building schematics there. But say you wanted another building right behind it. You could just left click again, and there you go. You now have two buildings set up to be built. If you right click, it'll get rid of your selection and you can always choose other things such as lights, maybe some farming or some camping like a campfire or a camp bed. We can just do a campfire right here because why not? And then what you do is you click confirm here to actually set up a queue for all these objects. If you hit undo, it'll delete the most recent one you set down. Or if you hit escape, it will actually just get rid of this menu and none of that stuff will be saved. So what you wanna do is click confirm and it will set up a wireframe for all the buildings that you need to build. Campfire are free and they're instantaneous so there they are it's just automatically put up there campfires are helpful because you put raw meat from animals that you kill inside here and it will automatically cook it into dried food that you can eat right here it's similar to how a mine works now any building that has a wireframe on it can't be used until you finish the construction 
The way the construction works is down here, every building requires certain material components. In this case, it's just building materials. Some buildings will require iron plating or steel bars or something like that. In the early game, it's mostly going to be building materials and iron plates. What you have to do is you have to actually add all five building materials for the construction to be completed. If you cannot afford all five building materials, you can always add one or two and just build the building up to that point. Every time you add one building material, it, this bar right here will fill up a little bit and you could build the construction up to that point as well. In order to actually build something, you'll actually have to right click on the building to set a character to building it. Now, unfortunately, NoobTube doesn't have any building material, so he can't build it. But one thing you can do is shift, right click, and add the engineer job to your character. And anytime you have access to building materials, he will grab the building materials and he'll put it into this building and attempt to build it. Like I said, there's many more nuances with building that I will discuss at a later time, but for now, that's the basics. This is where we're going to leave it off for part three. There's a lot more things I wanted to add to the video, but I want to keep the video short enough that they're easy to watch for new people. I know several people wanted other things to be added to the video, but that will be coming in part four. And if you have anything you'd like to see, or if you have any questions, keep adding them in the comments below, and I will try to respond to them in the videos coming forward. There's still several more videos going to be in this series, and I'm sorry they're coming out a little bit slow, but they will still be coming out. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.